So let's use SOLIDWORKS to model this cantilevered beam. It's a 10 meter long beam and right in the middle there's a counterclockwise moment, a counterclockwise curl. And you could imagine this as a uh, stick or a uh, member coming out and you twist it counterclockwise but you're not allowed to push it up or down or left and right. And the cantilever of course is fixed at the left wall. To make this happen, we'll start out with a 5 meter long beam, and then we'll add another beam right next to it, and SOLIDWORKS will automatically apply joints at the left, the middle, and the right side of it, and this middle joint we can apply a counterclockwise moment, and we'll fix the left side, run it, and we'll see what happens. I predict that this counterclockwise moment will cause the beam to bend upward. It will deflect the beam at the left side. There'll be a clockwise moment here to balance the counterclockwise moment. And moreover, the deformation of the beam to the right of the moment, because there's no force, there cannot be, uh, there's no vertical force there and there's no vertical force here, and there's also no bending moment or anything going on at the right hand side. So I predict that it'll be deflected upward, but it'll do so uh, by remaining straight. I started out with a 5 meter long alloy uh, steel beam with an arbitrary cross section. We want to make an identical beam to the right of that, so let's sketch. We'll make a sketch on this face right here. Control 8 to make it normal to that face. And I'll convert entities. I'll click these four lines. Click OK. That puts the same square onto my new sketch. And now I'll go Features, Extruded Boss and I'll go outward from the sketch plane blind and we'll go out five meters from that point. One thing you'll want to do is uncheck merge results. If you leave it checked it just makes one beam that will end up being 10 meters long. So uncheck that and click OK. And what I've got now are two beams, two selectable beams. So I could select this face or this face. There's two separate ones joined right at the middle. I made a new static study. Under part click the uh, plus symbol to expand it click here. I'm holding shift down to click both of them. Right click and it says treat selected bodies as beams. We'll click that. They change from the original uh, item icon to these beam looking shapes. So we're going to make them both beams. Now right click joint group, go edit and we're selecting all of the beams. So both beams in this case and it says we'll make a joint anywhere they're touching. Click calculate and in this this diagram we've got a joint here at the left and the right but we've also got a joint applied right in the middle where those two joints are, are touching and if you want to you could display the the neutral axis down the length of the beam. I applied a fixed geometry to this face to make it cantilevered and if I go to the front view we want to apply that counterclockwise moment to this center joint so right click external loads we will go torque Select joints, we'll select this center joint right here. And we also need a face uh, about which to apply the moment. It may be easiest to just work with the face sticking out at us for a, a directional. And we'll apply a moment that is normal to the plane. And let's just, we'll just leave it at one newton per meter. Click OK on that. What you'll see is this uh, thumbtack looking shape. And imagine your thumb, your right thumb, is pointing in the direction of the tip of the thumbtack. And that rep represents a counterclockwise moment acting at this joint. The joint on the right, I didn't do anything to it because it's just a, a free joint. So let's right click. We'll create a mesh. And I'll make it fine again because it's, it doesn't take much computational effort to do this. So we'll select. Uh, both of these entities make it fine. Click OK for the mesh. So now we've got our, our mesh acting along the x-axis. So we'll go back to the side view, click Run, and note that the beam deflected opposite to what we expect. And that's because I defined the torque, the direction of the torque incorrectly. My right thumb is going in that direction. I actually defined a clockwise torque, which bend it, uh, bent it downward. So I'll come back here, right click, force one, edit definition, and I'll reverse the direction here. Now I've got my thumb pointing out at the screen which implies a counterclockwise moment so I'll click OK on there and rerun it. And what I get is the deflection that we would anticipate. It's the upward deflection and I see the deflection occurring, the bending occurring here and again I, as I uh, anticipated there, there was a uh, no deflection to the right of the beam. It's just bent upward and I can look uh, my axial, my bending stress is down uh, right at zero 
uh, at the right hand side. There's no bending moment or anything going on to the right side. So that's a simple way to make a uh, beam with three different joints and apply a load to the middle joint.